we should remember how to solve a two-dimensional system using elimination. Um, that was where you might want to multiply one equation through by a number, maybe add them together, eliminate a variable. Um, back from Algebra 1, we're going to do a similar method, but this time our system might look something like this. Instead of just x's and y's, we're going to see x's, y's, and z's. So here's one equation. Let's get a system down. If we want to have a unique solution, if we have three variables, hopefully we have three equations. And in this example, we do. So when it says using elimination, we're going to do exactly that, except we're just going to pick two equations at a time and eliminate really whichever variable seems easiest to eliminate right away. Looking at these three equations, I notice that, let's see, in this top equation we have a negative y, and the second equation um, we have a 3y. So maybe we could multiply that top equation by 3, then we'd have a negative 3y up here. When we add it, the y's will eliminate. So let's try that. We're going to take this top equation, multiply everything through by positive 3, and we will get 6x minus 3y minus 6z equals negative 9. And I did that because if I now add it to the equation directly underneath it, which was this one, just to rewrite it exactly the same underneath it. When we add those two equations together, 6x plus x gives us 7x. Negative 3y plus 3y, those cancel out. Negative 6z plus c becomes negative 5z. Negative 9 plus negative 1 becomes negative 10. We've eliminated our y's. Unfortunately, this is not enough to be able to solve right away for one variable because we still have two variables. But if we look back at our original system of three equations, we have this equation that we have not yet used. We're now going to do the same process by el eliminate the y's using that equation that we haven't used yet. We're going to get another equation just in terms of x and z, and then we're going to end up with a two-variable system. So basically what we have to do, what we've done already is we've picked two equations, eliminated one variable. We have to pick another pair of two equations and eliminate that same variable. So we already chose to eliminate y. We have to eliminate y again using this bottom equation somehow. I think I'm going to use that top equation again, though, because I notice we have a negative y and a negative 4y. I think the easiest bet is to multiply the top equation by, let's see, negative 4. Then we'll have a positive 4y in the top and a negative 4y in the bottom. That way when we add those equations together, y's will eliminate again. Let's see what that will look like. We're going to take this equation. This time we're going to multiply it by negative 4. The reason negative 4 is what we're multiplying by is because the negative 4 times the negative y is what will give us the positive 4y which is what we'll eliminate with this negative 4y once we add. So when we do that, we get negative 8x, negative 4, times 2 is negative 8, plus 4y, plus 8z, equals positive 12. Notice all of our signs from our original equation switched because we were multiplying by a negative. I'm now just going to rewrite that equation with the arrow right underneath it so we can add neatly. When we add, let's see, negative 8x plus 5x is negative 3x. The negative, uh, the 4y plus the negative 4y, those eliminated. And you have 8z plus 3z is 11z equals, let's see, 12 plus 10 is 22. If you now notice, this equation just has x's and z's. And this equation just has x's and z's. Remember, it is mathematically sound to add the left-hand sides of an equation together and the right-hand sides of an equation together because of equality. That's essentially what equality means. So that was perfectly legal. We came up with two more equations we know are true, both in terms of x's and z's. And this, now we just have to figure out how to, eliminate, how to solve the system of two variables, which is something that um, you should have seen before. Hmm... Let's see, we have a negative 3x over here and a 7x over here. I could multiply this equation by 7 to get negative 21x. 
and I could multiply this equation by 3 to get positive 21x. Then I know when I add those two equations, the x's will eliminate. So now we're really just down to a two-variable system. Let's see, what do we get when we multiply this one by 7? We get negative 21, I'm just rewriting this down here, negative 21x plus 77z equals... 22 times 7 is 154. And when you multiply this equation by 3, let's see, let's write it all the way down here, we're going to get 21x minus 15z equals negative 30. And when we add those together, our x's eliminate. Negative 21x plus 21x is 0x. 77z minus 15z is 62z, and 154 plus negative 30, or minus 30, gives us 124. When we solve for z, we would divide both sides by 62, and we get that z is equal to 2. Since we have z, solved from that two-variable system, we can plug back in to solve for x. You can plug into either one of these equations in the cloud to solve for x. I'm going to pick the one, um, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. I'll just pick the one, who, this one over here. Let's see. So 7x minus 5z, which we just found was 2, equals negative 10. When we add 10 to both sides, we get that 7x is equal to 0 which means that x must have been 0. We now have z solved for, x is solved for, but don't forget way up at the top, we did have y's to start with, so we, we know we're not done until we get x, y, and z, a solution for each of them. To find y, we can just plug back into any one of the original equations, so that middle one looks kind of the easiest, x plus 3y plus z equals negative 1. Let's solve for y. x was 0, plus 3y plus z was 2, that has to be equal to negative 1. Well, if we subtract 2 from both sides, we get that 3y equals a negative 3. y must have been negative 1. So what we have is a solution for x, for y, and for z. What we really just did is we found the intersection of three planes in space. And the point where those three planes intersected was the point with coordinates x comma y comma z or 0, negative 1, 2. So you could write your solution as a point representing the point where those three planes intersected or I just sort of boxed my solutions x equals 0, y equals negative 1, z equals 2. Of course we could check that solution to make sure it's correct by plugging it into all three equations and making sure that it works for all three. I'll leave that up to you to do. Um, but I do believe that this is the correct solution. So just to recap what we did is we picked two equations, eliminated one variable. In this case, we started off with y, but you could do whichever one seems easiest to you. Pick another set of two equations, eliminating that same variable. So we eliminated y again. Then we were left with two equations with two variables. In this case, we just had x and z. We solved that as we've been doing. Um, solve for one variable by elimination again plugged back in, and then plugged back into one of our original equations to get that third variable. So it's really nothing new. It's just sort of a repeated process of elimination. Good luck with the practice.